next we will look into another program where it will uh, try to model one digital clock. So, um, digital clock has to be con uh, constructed. So, statement of the problem is like this. So, we have to implement a digital clock. The clock will normally display the time in 24 hour format in HH MMSS, okay, hour minute second format. And there is a mode button. So, if the mode button is pressed, so it will show the current date in DD MMYY format. So, our uh, time and date. If you, the button is released, so it comes back to display the time again. This date and time value, so they will be stored internally at some memory location. 3 bytes will be store, used to store the date, month and year values, so DD, MM and YY values. And the values of the memory location, uh, similarly for this hour, minute, second also will be 3, three more bytes. So, total 6 bytes uh, will be used for storing this HH, MM, SS, DD, MM, YY, these values. Okay? And then uh, the, this uh, location, the values of these locations will be updated automatically through a periodic timer interrupt. So, uh, 8051 has got the timer interrupt. So, at periodic intervals that interrupt should come and it will be, uh, uh, it will update this uh, timing. Okay? And uh, assume that there is a routine display. So, which when called with DPTR pointing to the beginning displays 3 bytes at 6 successive display modules. So, there are the, uh, 6 uh, display modules are there may be 7 segment display or something like that. So, this HH MMSS will be displayed. Uh, the, so, these are the 3 uh, successive bytes, it will be uh, they, they, they will be displayed on this uh, 6 successive display modules. And if the, the DPTR points to the location containing this DDMMYY, then it will display the uh, date part. Okay? And if it is so DPTR points to the hour minute second part, then it will be displaying the hour minute second. Also, we assume that there is a routine called calendar which when called updates the date value. So, naturally this calendar routine is also quite complex where it will be updating the uh, after every second the interrupt will come. So, accordingly this SS, MM, HH they will be updated and this uh, DD, MM, YY those values will also be updated. So, it is a very complex routine. So, we will not go into that. So, you can write that uh, uh, code separately, but our purpose is to show how this interrupt and this display modules they can be integrated into the system. Finally, the bytes corresponding to the time are stored at location 8000, 8001 and 8002. So, HH is in 8000, um, MM is in 8001, SS is in 8002. And then the bytes corresponding to uh, the date DDMMYY, they are at 8003, 4 and 5. So, how to design this uh, particular program? Okay. So, let us see how to do this. So, we assume that the crystal that is connected to the system is say 12 megahertz crystal for the sake of, for the ease of calculation. So, we will take uh, that 11 point something something the fractional value of that crystal uh, uh, frequency. So, we will take it as 12 megahertz. So, uh, we will be using this timer 0, we will be using this timer 0 for counting seconds. So, after every second I will be uh, I want to get uh, um, an interrupt and then I should be updating the second value. So, uh, the um, we should get a clock frequency of 12 by 12. So, uh, you know that uh, this uh, for the timer, so the, for the system clock is divided by 12 to get the clock uh, reaching the timer. So, the, the clock that reaches the timer is 1 megahertz. So, if we set the value uh, of the timer to 3036 set the timer value to 3036 and repeat for repeat the timer for 16 second uh, 16 times so this is the timer value that is set and repeat timer 16 times then you will get about uh, so how much uh, so it is uh, so every time you uh, set this value so you get a uh, uh, time value of 65536 minus 3036 okay this into 16 so this is the total of, uh, after so this is part time so if you repeat it 16 times so it is into 16 so this value is about 10 power 6 okay so which is uh, um, uh, so this will be uh, the, this this is 10 power 6 so this will be giving me a, so it is matching with this 1 megahertz so this delay will be matching to that 1 second that we are looking for Okay. So, for designing the timer part, I, I, have, I, can, I have to use this timer with the initial, with the initial value as 3036 and then 
uh, repeat the timer 16 time to get 1 second delay. Okay. So, after the after the timer interrupt has come 16 times, I should update the uh, second field and then the, the updation routine will be updating the second field, minute field, etcetera. The update routine should be called accordingly. So, this is the basic idea that we will be using while writing the program. So, we define a one memory location repeat count. So, we initialize one define one memory location repeat count db 0. So, what the system will do? It will give you one memory location whose name is repeat count and it will be initialized to 0. Then org 0 ljmp main. So, it will be jumping to the main routine then from the beginning. Then for the timer interrupt, I have to do something. Okay. So, for the timer interrupt, so timer interrupt is from 0, 0, 0 b. So, so I have to say like org 0, 0, 0 b hex and there I should put the code for the timer interrupt. The first thing that we need to do is to save the dptr register because the dptr value will be used by this uh, timer interrupt. So, this uh, dptr value will be saved. So, that is done by push 82 hex this 82 hex uh, and but then push 83 hex. So, this 82 hex 83 hex, so they are actually saving the DPL and DPH registers. This uh, the if you look into the corresponding address, so this is for DPL and this is for DPH. Okay. Then we have to save the A register, the accumulator register. So, we also save push 0 e 0 x. So, this is the saving of a register and also we will be in our code we will be using the r 1 register. So, that r 1 register is also saved. So, push 0 1 x. So, this is the saving of r 1 register. So, these values are saved. So, this is actually this is the proper way of writing interrupt service routine because in interrupt service routine, so you may be using some registers. Now, you do not know from which point in the system the interrupt has come. So, that uh, main the program that was executing there might be using those registers fine. So, uh, it is better it is uh, it is better that whatever register you are going to use in your ISR code at the beginning you save all those registers in the stack and before coming back from the uh, subroutine you just restore all those registers. So, that uh, the program which got interrupted will be able to continue without any problem. So, this is though in our previous interrupt service routine. So, we have not done this thing. So, ideally you should do this for all ISR the whatever register you are using you first save those registers into stack and before coming back. So, you restore all those registers from the stack fine. Then in the R 1 register we uh, load the repeat count. So, move R 1 comma repeat count so that repeat count will be using as a counter for that 16 then increment R 1 and we check whether the value has become 16 or not. So, C J N E C J N E R 1 comma hash 16 comma L 1. So, if the uh, count is not 16, then I do not have to do anything, no updation of time will take place. So, I have to skip over the next part of the code. So, this part of the code will be valid when we will be uh, coming to updating the uh, this part of whatever we will be writing now. So, they will become uh, useful when this uh, count value has become 16, so that the second has to be updated. So, for updating second what we do? So, first uh, we uh, reset this r 1 to 0 move r 1 comma hash 0 then move dp uh, from 8002 we are uh, getting the dptr the, the value 8002 will be obtained in the dptr because uh, 8002 is holding the second value. Okay. So, 8002 is holding the second value. 
so move dptr comma hash 8000 to x okay okay that uh, so that this is move x move x uh, sorry no this is not move x this is move and then move x a comma at the rate dptr move move x a comma at the rate dptr that means i am updating the uh, i have got the second value into the a register now uh, now i increment a because one second has passed so i increment a so this i have to check i need to check whether the a value has become 60 or not so if it is 60 that means i have to update the minute part okay so cjne uh, 60 comma l1 so if it is less than 60 nothing is done so uh, the updation is over but if it is uh, less if it is uh, more than if, if it is 60 then it will come to this point i clear a the accumulator is cleared and then i need to save this uh, new value of this accumulator into the second location the, the the location corresponding to the second part so move x at the rate dptr comma a so it will put zero onto the second part then i have to look into the minute part so for getting the minute part i have to move a comma sorry no, this is not a move uh, move dptr comma hash 8001 hex fine and then I should get so this now if I do a move x move x a comma at the rate dptr so I will get the minute part into the accumulator and since there is a, the, the value the uh, second was over so that 60 was over so I, I need to increment the minute part so accumulator is incremented now again i need to check whether this value has become 60 or not so if it has if it has if it has become 60 then the hour value has to be updated otherwise this is fine so again we compare cjne a comma hash 60 with uh, then if it is uh, not 60 then nothing need, needs to be done but if it is equal to 60 then I have to clear A, then store this pattern onto uh, the uh, memory location for this uh, minute and then I have to do the update. So that is I need to do a move x this at the rate dptr comma A, fine. Then I have to update the day uh, the hour part. So, our part is available in location to 8000 hex. So, move dptr comma hash 8000 hex fine. Then move x a comma at the rate dptr. So, this will this will take the uh, our part into a register and now I need to increment A. So, if I do an increment A that means the A value will be updated. Uh, so, this hour part is updated. So, now I need to check whether the hour part has become 24 or not. So, that CJNE A comma hash 24 comma L1. If it has become equal to 24 in that case I need to clear the accumulator and uh, move this uh, 0 value to the hour memory location. So, that will be doing that will be done using this move x instruction move x at the rate dptr comma a. So, that register is cleared and also that location is cleared now I have to update the calendar. So, I said that there is a routine call calendar which is uh, do, which will be able to do that. So, we are not writing that routine. So, we are giving a call to the calendar routine for 
doing that. So, a call calendar will call that routine and it will be updating the calendar part. Okay. So, done. Now, the other now that L 1 onwards, okay, that L 1 onwards that portion has to be written where I do not need to do anything. So, they are actually uh, the value is uh, the value the second value or the minute value or hour value. Uh, is, so, updation has been over. So, I do not need to do anything. So, what I do? So, move x at the rate d p t r comma a. Okay. So, like so a register was holding uh, the hour value or minute value or second value the updated part and that is moved to the uh, d p t r. Okay. So, and this repeat count should uh, this r 1 has been incremented to hold the repeat count. So, that has to be restored. So, we move this uh, r 1 to the repeat count memory location. So, move repeat count comma r 1. So, r 1 s value will be moved to the repeat count memory location. Then I am done. So, I have to up, uh, now I have to uh, uh, restore all those registers. So, it, it should be in the reverse order in which we have saved it, saved them like pop 0 1 hex. Then I have to uh, pop 0 e g the accumulator register pop 0 e 0 hex. Then that 83 hex pop 83 hex then pop 82 hex. Okay. So, those locations are uh, popped out. Now, this uh, T L uh, and T H. So, they are to be uh, again uh, loaded with uh, the values. So, now uh, actually, so this part uh, where I have to uh, again uh, load that uh, that pattern that uh, 30 uh, that 3603 or that value. 3036 that value 3036 has to be loaded into uh, this um, regist this the timer uh, registers TL0 and TH0. So, that that has to be done. So, we do it like this that move TL0 comma hash 0 d c hex and this uh, TH0 move t h 0 comma um, hash 0 b hex. So, if you do that, so this this number 0 b d c, uh, this is actually that 3036 hex, 3036 value and then I have to set the timer set b t r 0. So, that the next uh, the timer is enabled, so that it will again be interrupting the system when the timeout occurs. So, this is the end of the interrupt service routine. Now, the main routine that I need to write. So, the main routine will be something like this. First, this timer has to be uh, programmed, the mode has to be set. So, we have to uh, mo move it the T mod register has to be programmed with the pattern 0000 0000 0001 in binary. Then T L and T H they are to be having that uh, this uh, time values the count uh, the initial values move T L comma hash 0 D C hex then move T H 0 comma hash uh, 0 B hex. Then I have to clear the T F 0 bit and uh, then I have to enable the interrupt for the timer. So, you can check that this uh, interrupt setting will lead to the value 82 hex okay. for enabling this uh, timer 0 interrupt uh, it will be 82 hex. Then this will be set b this is set b t r 0 okay. this is set, this set b t r 0. So, the timer uh, will be enabled and then I can just wait here till the. So, this is uh, we can wait for this uh, it, it said that now I have to uh, read uh, 
the mode button is pressed or not. So, that has to be checked. So, jump on bit P 1.0 comma L 2. Okay. In then if it is if the mode button is not pressed then this bit is 0. So, we should display the date part. So, in that case the DPTR register should be loaded with the value 8000 it should be loaded with the value 8000 and then I can just uh, jump over to L 3. Then in L 2, L 2 we came because the uh, mode button has been pressed fine. So, this DPTR has to be loaded with a different value. So, move DPTR with the address of this uh, date part okay, that is 8003 uh, hex. And then in L3, I have to call the display routine. A call display. And then SJMP L4. So, this is the main routine. So, main routine, what are you doing? First, setting the timer mode, setting the time count, clearing the timer interrupt flag TF0. Then we are uh, enabling the uh, interrupt, okay. the timer interrupt is enabled, then we are starting the timer, this much is done. Now, uh, we are, uh, so this is this, this is done only once, up to this setting is done only once. Now, I am reading port uh, once bit number 0 and if that bit is set, that is the mode button. So, if it is, if the mode button is pressed, then this bit is uh, 1. So, we are coming to L2 and in the DPTR we are putting the address of the date and the display routine is called. So, display routine will uh, display uh, the value now uh, the of the four of the three of the six uh, in the we have got six displays and they are that HA the DDMM YY those will be displayed and then SJMP L4 so it will again go back there check whether the mode button is pressed or not. So, if the mode button is not pressed in that case it will display the uh, the, the the time part so it, it will come to 8000 hex uh, so 8000 hex will go to dptr and then this uh, the value so it, it will be jumping to l3 and uh, there it will be displaying parts and the, since dptr points to the uh, day part the, the day the hour the time part so it will be displaying the time part properly so this way i can do this thing so only one thing one small thing is missing so at this point i think you you, you, you need to have another clearing of this uh, TF0 bit, otherwise it will be taken as another interrupt immediately. So, that clear TF0, so this line should be there. So, in this way we can design a uh, timer uh, based uh, uh, routine that can be used for designing a digital clock. Okay. Next we will look into another uh, program. So, suppose that as uh, we have got an oscillator connected to that uh, 8051 that is operating at 12 megahertz and we want to generate a 4 kilohertz square wave on the pin 1.4 okay, using this timer 0. So, how to do this? So, for this uh, matter again so uh, we have so the timer clock uh, sorry this timer clock that we have is uh, that uh, is a 12 by 12. So, it is 12 megahertz crystal divided by 12. So, the timer clock is 1 megahertz, but the waveform that we generate for uh, um, uh, 4 kilohertz. Okay. So, the required uh, time period for this uh, clock signal time period uh, needed is 1 upon 4 kilohertz. So, that is uh, about 250 microsecond. So, this is 250 microsecond that we want. So, since it is a uh, if we assume that it is a 50 percent duty cycle square wave. So, on period is uh, on period and off period. So, both of them are same and they are going to be equal to on period and off period are same and they are going to be equal to 125 microsecond. So, what we need to do from the timer is that we need to have a delay of 125 microsecond. So, for getting that, so I have to see what is the uh, value that should be loaded. Okay. So, the value to be loaded is equal to 65536 minus this 125 by 1. Okay. So, 125 microsecond and this is, this is over 1 megahertz. So, I can divide it by that. So, this quantity 
So, it is basically 65411 in decimal. So, that converts to C 1 F F in the hexadecimal notation. So, this should be the value to be loaded and accordingly we can uh, have this uh, square wave generated. So, we will write that program. So, how to write it? So, we can uh, we, we again uh, take help of the timer interrupt or g 0 0 0 0 x you can write. Then L J M P main. So, we'll, which will take this assembler uh, this program to the at at uh, at uh, location uh, memory location 0 it will put the instruction ljmp main then the timer interrupt is at location 0 0 0 b so org 0 0 0 b hex so that is the timer loca location and the timer routine is uh, uh, simple so it just complements the bit uh, p 1.4 when the timer interrupt comes the action that i need to take is just complement the uh, one point uh, the um, the uh, port bit 1.4 and then the timer has to be restarted so for that purpose so i have to move this tl0 comma uh, hash 0 ffx and i have to move th0 comma hash 0c1 x and then if that interrupt comes then i need to clear uh, tf0 we have to clear this uh, tf0 and we have to set b set b tr0 okay then let i so this uh, clear bit will be clearing the bit so that uh, the uh, it is not uh, the, the interrupt has been serviced, so it should be uh, cleared, otherwise, it will be taken as another interrupt. And this uh, set B TR0, so it will be setting the um, timer so that uh, it will be the timer will start again, so that that interrupt uh, can come. Then, maybe my main program is from location 8000 hex, so I put another ORG here, so ORG 8000 hex, and the main program is starting from there. So, here the thing that I need to do is initialize the T mod register. So, I can say like move T mod comma based on the requirement hash 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 b then move T L 0 comma hash 0 f f x then move th0 comma hash 0 c1 hex and then clear the tf0 bit clear the tf0 bit set the interrupt enable register for getting the interrupts hash 82 hex so this will enable the timer interrupt 0 and then I have to start the timer. So, that is by set B tr 0 and now the main program can wait in a loop because there is nothing more to do. So, it is S J M P it is S J M P L 1. So, it will be looping there. So, now uh, so what the main program is doing it is setting the timers setting interrupt and all that and then it is looping in an infinite loop the sitting idle actually and whenever the interrupt comes the timer interrupt comes so it will be coming to this uh, location 0 0 0 b and if you look into this uh, memory layout for this program that i have written so it is uh, like this so at location 0 we have the instruction ljmp main and main is 8000 so it has got this one ljmp main so that is 8000 and then at uh, so this is uh, this is there then at 0 0 0 b at location b you have got uh, this code this interrupt service routine code 
so this will be here fine then at 8000 from location 8000 you will have this piece of code so the, if this is the this piece of code will be loaded here now how the system executes the whole thing like uh, when the, uh, the when the processor is reset the program counter is loaded with 0000, 0000, 0000, 0000 hex so it will come to this particular location it will get this instruction ljmp8000 so it will jump to this location 8000 start executing these instructions so when it starts executing these instructions so it is the timer is set and all those things so that is done then the program is looping at this point in between sometime the timer interrupt will come timer 0 will overflow timer interrupt will come so and the processor uh, it will uh, um, automatically the hardware will automatically uh, put the um, uh, um, uh, program counter to uh, come to this 000b when the interrupt occurs and then it will execute this interrupt service routine and after some after executing this interrupt service routine it will again come back to this end point where it was sjmpl1 so it will be coming back to this point it will be executing there it will be looping there continually it will be executing there so this way again when the interrupt comes again this program will be invoked and it will be this uh, interrupt service routine will be invoked and it will go like this so in this way we can uh, use this interrupt service routines for uh, doing many important jobs so which are to be done irrespective of the main functionality that we have in the uh, in the system okay so that is for timer zero so we have also seen for uh, um, the serial transmission we have also seen for the, this external interrupts so this that way interrupt programming is uh, very important if you are uh, trying to design an embedded system where you have got a number of devices uh, or number of activities to be carried on uh, at some specific intervals of time